the Clayman Institute for Gender Research at Stanford University, creating a more equal society for women and men through data-driven research and public education. Our number one recommendation in the report is that universities put into place a set of guidelines, policies, or protocols for partner hiring. I mean, it just any, any faculty hire is, is deal-making. If there are guidelines or procedures in place, the university has already thought about how should we go to that second department and make the request. In situations like this, you've got to, as frequently as possible, remind everybody in any position of hiring power that we are all in this together. Sometimes we'll be buyers, sometimes we'll be sellers. And uh, try to think of the university as a whole uh, when these requests come to you. Universities want to attract the brightest and the best. Anybody who searches partner hiring on our website is going to get immediately to a paragraph that says Ber Berkeley is committed to meeting the partner needs of faculty and we think that that is fundamental to achieving academic excellence. So we send out a very public message. Most universities, half of the 13 universities in our study, had no process or guidelines for partner hiring. This means that there's a lot of, I think, prejudice on both sides. Berkeley recently put together a written protocol for addressing uh, partner hiring um, for our latter rank faculty, and the protocol is written very intentionally, vaguely, to allow the broadest discretion for the academic units, because fundamentally, any kind of faculty or academic hiring, it's an academic decision, and there need, you know, it needs to be based on the merits, the best interests of the department have to be foremost. So it's a very complicated mix of considerations. And this is certainly one important part of that mix. If there is a guideline or procedure in place, um, the chair may be able to go to the dean, who in fact may have extra funds for this kind of issue. A number of public universities in our study ask that the new position be funded by um, a one-third, one-third, one-third payment. A third of the payment comes from the department who has the first hire, the initial candidate. The second payment comes from the department of the receiving, the receiving department who takes the second hire. And a third of the money comes from the provost's office or from the dean's office. So this sweetens the deal for the receiving department. HERC is a great opportunity for universities in metropolitan areas. HERC stands for the Higher Education Recruitment Consortium, and it is a group of universities um, that band together, either in the New York area, we have one in the Bay Area, and the universities may advertise their jobs together. The point is that you have many universities in a particular area, say the Bay Area, where partners can be absorbed. So maybe both professors won't get jobs at Stanford in the Bay Area, but one may have a job at Stanford and one may have a job at San Jose State University, which is just a few miles down the road, or over at Berkeley, um, which is a bit of a commute, but still doable. So it, what HERC does, and now they're, they're just sprouting up, these consortia are sprouting up all over the all around the country. It was forming a HERC, forming a higher education recruitment consortium was one of the first things on my list of things to do. Universities are looking for diversity, both um, concerning underrepresented minorities and still concerning women, both minority and uh, majority. So universities have a real opportunity at the moment. They, if they understand the kind of um, hiring practices that can promote equality, they can strive to promote those policies at their university. So what we found is if you choose an extremely well-qualified woman and recruit her, they are likely to bring partners who are equally qualified. That's just the way people are partnered. So you can, you can solve the issue of gender 
equality and also ethnic equality if you look at your hiring practices. And then we also have created an office that we're calling the Cal Sierra office, which is specifically to address all of the recruitment and retention and relocation needs um, with regard to ladder rank faculty. And a big piece of what that office is doing is addressing the partner hiring needs of both prospective faculty and also faculty that we're trying to retain. Communication matters a lot. I think actually one of the best reasons for creating it was to spark the discussion amongst our department chair and deans. I couldn't do my job if the president of Princeton and the provost of Princeton and the dean of the faculty of Princeton weren't all very clear that we want to be a family-friendly university, that we move families, not individuals, that partner placement is important to us, that we're prepared to make commitments to partners uh, because when we're making a commitment to a faculty member. So for universities, especially universities, looking for a diverse professorate, um, our report will help you set policy which can lead you to fulfill your goals. Mm -hmm.